Welcome to Tom's Tech Show. Today, we're going to go over something that Google has failed me. I've not been able to find an answer, so I actually had to figure this one out myself. It's connecting to MySQL from PowerShell on Linux. Hey, this is Tom from Tom's Tech Show. And one thing I've been trying to do, I've been trying to move some of my systems from uh, Windows-based to Linux-based because running Linux workloads in AWS is quite a bit cheaper than running Windows in AWS. So getting these functions moved over is critical for cost savings and things like that. Well, one of the things that I need to do is be able to have PowerShell Core. PowerShell Core is the version of PowerShell that runs on Linux and have that be able to communicate with my database, which is MySQL. And um, I haven't been able to find an answer easily in any you know documentation or anything out there. So this one I really had to dig in and, and find out it was a good exercise uh, to be able to do. Okay. So first I'm running uh, Debian 9 on my box. So um, I kind of like the Debian flavor, apt-get, and stuff like that um, of Linux. So um, that's kind of what I'm running here. Um, so this is the Microsoft steps for installing PowerShell Core. Pretty straightforward. Um, you just run the commands. There'll be a link to this page um, and all the stuff inside this video um, at the bottom um, in the description. So just look for those if you want to kind of go through it yourself. So uh, we're doing the updates. We're getting adding the Microsoft packages and, and all of that. Well, that gets me so that I can come up and run, you know, PowerShell and get me to the PowerShell prompt. But I want to be able to connect to my, I have a database here, just kind of a demo database. It has a couple of records uh, that I just want to be able to query. I want to find out what this data is. I want to get it back in a way that's usable so that I can perform functions on it. Okay, so I know that MySQL has a connector for .NET. So I want to just go and install just the .NET and Mono version of this. So Mono is a version of um, system that runs on Linux that allows you to run some of these uh, .NET type libraries. So we go to the Mono Project website, go to download, go to Linux. I go to Debian because I'm on Debian. Um, and then I run the commands here for Debian 9. So this is going to allow me to run the MySQL file that I'm going to download as well. So that's been downloaded and installed. You run through these commands, install apt get like this is going to be in the bottom of the description. Um, so we download and grab the MySQL connector. And if I look at it inside the MySQL connector and inside the version folder, there's some DLLs here. And one that I really am concerned about and really need to use is this mysql.data.dll. So I take these files in here and I copy them to opt Microsoft PowerShell 6 folder. So here they are, they're listed here inside this folder. I'm kind of ensuring that the folder rights are the same so that I can access them. So I just put them in that folder. You could make a subdirectory and do a chone to change the owner of the files. Um, and make sure that you have access to them. Okay, now that those files are there, and we have uh, Mono installed, so we would need to install Mono by going through the uh, the instructions here. Get Mono installed, get the MySQL connector installed, then we can start using the class for connecting to MySQL from PowerShell Core. Okay, so I've got uh, my uh, code here. Uh, this is uh, Visual Studio Code, which also runs on uh, Linux. So 
I'm looking at kind of the same way you would construct everything in Visual Basic to be able to connect. Um, but one of the first things you do if you're trying to run any of these commands is up here at the top, we need to add this assembly, the mysql.data.dll. So I put in add type dash assembly, opt slash Microsoft slash PowerShell slash six slash mysql.data.dll. And that allows me to bring in all these libraries that in PowerShell are gonna enable me to connect to MySQL. So I have a connection string that connects me to my MySQL server and I set that connection. I create a connection type, an object mysql.data.mysql.client.mysql.connection. So this is creating an object type that's the MySQL connection object type because we have to connect and then open that connection and then run the query. So I set the connection string and then open the connection. Next thing we need to do is build a command that we want to run. So we have the connection open. Next thing is we need to run a command against that connection and see if we get any data back. So we have to create a new object that's also from this MySQL data DLL, which is mysql.data.mysql.client.mysql command. So and the command is going to be going to be really simple here. It's going to be select star from user list. So I tell my commands here that the command connection is going to be my connection that I just opened previously. Uh, you have to prepare the connection. Then we come down here and we do a data equals command execute reader. Now this command actually goes out when you're doing a select command you need to run execute reader that just goes and grabs data and, and brings it back. Um, if you go over to um, the MySQL development website, you're gonna see down here there's this command called execute reader, allows you to, it says sends command text, which was our command string that we have, to the connection and builds the MySQL data reader. So this is gonna connect it, get ready for reading all this data and get our table set and what we need to get data. Now, if you're running a query that does sol does update or insert, then oddly enough, you have to do this command here, which is execute non-query. So th this is a command that is not just querying data. This command is pushing data into update records or insert records. And they call it non-query because I guess they just couldn't call it execute command or execute update. So they just call it non-query. I don't know. That's what it is. Okay, so back here at my DB testing file. Um, so we, re we execute the reader and then we have to loop through the records. If we just pull this back and just see what's in data, it just gives me kind of a field list and doesn't give me the actual data that I want. So I need to uh, do this data re read. So I've set the execute command here here and then the execute reader set that to variable data then I need to read the data from the database and this is this command data read so now we're reading it and as we're cycling through it's going to come back and say did I get data or did I not get data so If it's true, then we want to process it. If it's false, then we're at the end of our list of data from our command. Okay, now there's some different things we have to do. I'm gonna build this into an array. So to get the data out, I need to cycle through it. And in order to, I'm kind of building this so that this right here, this parts of this can just be a function. So I can break down the top part into a function of open my database and then the bottom part I can break that into get my I get my data structure so that I can call this function from later on but right now we're just going to step right through this this code here so so I loop through however many you can get a field count you can see how many fields there are inside the read that you just got how many fields um, and you can also pull back different information like what kind of 
field type because that means you're going to need to read that data in a specific method. So here I know there's an integer in my data. So if my field type is integer 32, then I pull my raw data and I get an integer 32 into the raw data field. If it was a string, here we're getting raw data as just get string. So there are more different types like date, time, uh, there's uh, boolean, there's, there's you know blobs, there's different things, but I'm just working with two different types of data here. So I've only got those two in here. Okay, so then I add that member to an array. Up here on the top, I do this data list is a blank array. So down here I set it, create an, the array and add a member to it. And then take that and put it into the array. So this allows me to cycle through all the records, build an array, and then later in my code, I can pull and query that, I can pull data out of that array and address that array. Okay, so now in uh, Visual Studio Code, you can, you select, you can select all, I right click, and I say run selection. So that's gonna dump it down to the bottom and it's gonna run all of this code. And if I look up here, okay, it didn't see any errors, so that's good. So I should be able to come here to my variable data list that I had and just hit that in and hit enter and boom, there's my data list that I just queried from my SQL data and I can confirm that. Looking at my workbench, yes, I've got the, this data, one, two, three records and over here in my testing, I've pulled back those three records. I can address them different ways. I can say, you know, what's what's record number one? It starts at zero, so zero then one would be ID two in my record set here. Um, so that I can be able to go through these and if I want to cycle through them in a loop, process them, display them on screen for someone, then I can do that. Okay. So that's how you connect to and query data from a MySQL database from within inside PowerShell Core on Linux. If you have any questions or anything else, go ahead and comment down below and subscribe to my channel and like this video. And I do a lot of technological techie videos uh, based on kind of what I do as my job. And I also do some entertainment videos, and I do photography videos, because like many tech people, we like photography. Um, so all those are on my channel. They're arranged in playlists, so that you can just go through those. Um, thanks for watching this video today, and God bless.